lots of people find love online, but I swore off dating apps five years ago when I met Amy. It started off fine. I talked to her and a few girls for a couple of weeks before asking her to meet in person. We had the most in common, and she was the one that I found myself wanting to get to know more. When we agreed to meet, the plan was for me to pick her up at her house, and then we would go out for dinner and a movie. A nice, simple, low-pressure first date. Or it should have been. I know what you're thinking, that I was led to an abandoned property in the middle of nowhere and was promptly relieved of my possessions. But that's not the case. In fact... Her house was completely normal, and she looked exactly like her picture. Rare finds, I know. The red flags didn't start appearing until we were at the restaurant. When interacting with me, she was the sweetest girl you ever met, but when it came to interacting with the waiter, she was a completely different person. All the guy did was ask to take our drink order, and her entire demeanor changed. She had an angry scowl and her voice dropped at least two octaves. I never would have recognized her as the same person I'd been talking to. Yet, once the waiter walked away, she returned to her former peppy self, like it was this completely normal thing to do. That happened throughout dinner, and the movies were even worse. We changed seats several times because people sat too close, and she mocked everyone for how they looked or what they were wearing. Again, I know what you're thinking, raging narcissist, and yes, absolutely, I understood that before dinner was half finished, but not gonna lie, she kinda scared me, so I just wanted to get through with the date and then ghost her. After the movie, I took her home, she invited me in for coffee, trying to politely decline, I said that I had to get up early and she didn't want to hear it, she unbuckled my seatbelt and made me so uncomfortable that I pretended to agree. Then I turned to open my door, and I sent a quick call-me text to my friend. Amy was closing her door, and I was just standing up when the phone rang. I answered and told her to give me a second so my roommate knew that I'd be late. She smirked and went inside, while I pretended everything was fine and told my friend not to expect me. He heard me call him my roommate, so he knew something was up. He played along, thinking that Amy could hear him. The second she went inside, I got back in the car and just ran for it. Not my proudest moment, but anyway, I was just turning off her street when the barrage of calls started. I blocked her, but she messaged me on Tinder instead. Since I was still trying to tell my friend what actually happened, I put my phone on sleep mode and let her text away. Thirty minutes later, I was back home and ready to finish blocking Amy. In that amount of time, she not only found my Twitter, Discord, Reddit, and Instagram, she left over 200 messages in total. The majority of them were just random insults, but it was unsettling that she cared that much. In total, we'd known each other for less than three weeks and met once. I can't imagine that the date was that great for her. I didn't laugh at her cruelty or contribute to it. I barely spoke. This should be the end of the story. I sure thought it was. But my phone started blowing up again the next day. She made new accounts on everything, so I set all of mine to private. Then she started calling and texting from different numbers. I don't know if she was borrowing people's phones or spoofing her ID, but I was only dumb enough to answer one of her calls. She immediately began screaming, but I didn't wait to hear what she was saying before hanging up. I was just about ready to change my number when it finally stopped. I had hoped that she found someone new to obsess over, but that was too good to be true. There were two glorious days of peace before I woke to the sound of breaking glass at 3 a.m. I'm still not sure how, but she found out where I lived and threw a brick through my big living room window. I had to call the police and do the whole routine, so I didn't get back to sleep that night either. After seeing the messages Amy sent, they agreed that she was the likely suspect and said that they would have to talk with her. Well, she wasn't at home, and I wasn't sure where she worked, just that she was a hairstylist. The officers said they would try again at the end of their shift, 
or have another car check with her that night. They also advised that I buy some security cameras. I did that on the way to work. They were installed the second I got home. That night, they recorded her approaching my house around the same time, only now she had a softball bat. She then proceeded to smash my mailbox before busting my taillights, headlights, and the window next to my front door. I didn't wake up until she was working on the car, and once I saw her on camera, I immediately called the police again. After reaching through the broken window and unlocking the door, she began smashing everything in her way as she searched for my bedroom. I couldn't get out of my window because it was painted shut, so I hid in my closet. And I watched and listened as Amy searched my house, and I called 911. I've honestly never been so scared in my life. She was proper crazy. She wasn't even drunk, just hurt and angry. When the cops finally arrived, I cried actual tears of relief. I couldn't see any flashing lights from my hiding spot, but I heard officers yelling at Amy when they charged inside. The icing on the cake... Amy wasn't even her real name. She was on the run from attempted murder charges in another state because she put her ex in the hospital. All in all, I'd say that I got off lucky. Insurance took care of the damages, and I never saw Amy again. She skipped town once she made bail, and I have no clue where she might be or what could have happened to her. I'm just grateful she didn't come back to mess with me again. So yeah... I quit online dating after that. This past summer, I was a counselor at a day camp. Aside from being a counselor, I was also a bus monitor. My job was to sit in front of the bus next to the driver and help the kids on and off the bus. The first couple of days of camp, I really enjoyed being a bus monitor. I got a ride there and back from camp, plus I got extra pay. But then it started getting creepy. The bus driver seemed okay at first. He was this older guy with a little hint of an accent. He would ask me weird questions, which, admittedly, I answered, because I thought wherever he came from, it was probably okay to ask these questions, and I didn't want to make him feel bad. On the first day of camp, he asked for my number. I thought nothing of it and gave it to him, figured it was for work. He would probably just want to call in the mornings when he got to my house. I was dead wrong. On the second day of camp, we passed a Dunkin' Donuts on the way back. Me, being the idiot that I am, just said nonchalantly, Oh, I love Dunkin'. After we dropped off all the kids, he proceeded to go the opposite direction of my house. I asked him where he was going, and he said back to Duncan. I freaked out. I told him no, that he should just take me home. He wouldn't. I started asking more urgently. He wouldn't. I was screaming and on the verge of tears. I was begging for him to just please turn back. He wouldn't. I've just watched many shows in my lifetime, and I know what happens when creepy old men drive you away from a location when they have control of you in their car. We were coming to a rolling stop. I pulled the doors of the bus open and I jumped out. I ran or walked two miles home, 90 degree weather, but it was well worth it. The next day and the day after, he would bring me coffee from Duncan. Aside from the fact that I wouldn't trust it from him, I'm lactose intolerant and I need almond milk. So... I just got rid of it. Every day, he would act more and more creepy. The way that he would talk to me got worse. He'd make all these comments when I went to go help the kids off the bus about how sexy I am. Mind you, I was 14 at the time. That summer, my mental state was down the tubes. Every time I remembered I had to go back on the bus with him, I'd have a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. I never knew if he was going to do something to me. And you know the best part. No one believed me. I told my friends and the other counselors about the stuff that he did, and they thought it was totally normal. 
when he went upstate for the weekend and brought me back a pink watch, a pink flamingo keychain, and pink nail polish. Do you know what they said? That's so cute. Hell no. It was downright creepy, and I don't know why they didn't think so. This is an actual conversation we had via text. Him. What are you doing? Are you alone? Me. I'm eating supper with my family. It was a lie. I just didn't want to talk to him. Him. Okay, call me later. Him. Are you awake? Him. Hello? Him. You should get WhatsApp. I use it to message the people I care about. I even showed these messages to people, and they still thought it was completely normal. I brought these messages to the director of the camp, and she still did nothing about it. I wasn't there the second half of the summer, but I heard that he still was. He should not be working anywhere near children, and I said as much. He should be in prison, behind bars. Even after the summer was over, he would still continue to call and text me. I was scared to block his number, because he knew where I lived. Eventually, and luckily... After a few months of not answering, he stopped. Creepy bus driver whose name I won't mention. If you're reading this, fuck you.